the worst way to do it. Welcome back, guys, to the coverage of YC's Rimini. I keep promising you we're going to be right back. And I keep disappointing. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Did you said Rimini? He did. Said, he did. It took me a minute. And I was just like, hang on. Yeah. I was like, Only it's freezing here. <laughs> it's it's, very cold. it's, it's cold. cold. How do you not realize that? You're um, not wearing flip flops? We were just going through all of those past matches and all of those. <laughs> this is our list of interesting decks this weekend. Um, it's, it's like. Uh, it looks like a death certificate almost with all those uh, lines strike through. So the the creative decks are falling slowly. I told you we'd deal with that other category, right? Yeah. Matt, see, Matt works quickly. This is how Matt did it, yeah. But not all of them have been just eliminated yet. We uh, have Marcel Brunner in our feature match now, who's playing Pendulum Magician, one of the expected decks. And on the other side, we got Tiago Bayao from Portugal. We don't have that every day. Who is playing Invoked. So that's yeah. a bit more creative matchup and yeah. they are also both doing pretty well i think they have four and one each yeah four and one yeah table so 51 table 51 so so not bad at all uh very cl close to the top of the score. field um yeah wh what else is there to say about this matchup we, we've seen pendulum before we haven't had in no we haven't had invoked today we haven't had a uh, true invoked in a while i haven't actually i mean looking at this list this pendulum deck doesn't really deviate from Anything you'd come to expect, nothing surprising here. Um, no, everything looks... Uh, oh, actually, the side deck options for Marcel, my, my which we'll cover a little bit later when we get into it. Um, okay. But the the main, the main deck looks pretty much... Pretty standard. Pretty standard expected. Okay. Oh, and the other deck list is a bit complicated. We, we ended up not having the deck list, but the player, fortunately, took a picture of his deck list um, yeah. and sent it to us. So... Look, you can try and decipher some of that. Uh, it's like, uh, yeah, pretty standard. Uh, I mean, there's, there's, as far as like, if you imagine what an invoked deck would look like, that's what it looks like. Okay. He's playing very small engine of Alistair um, with the invoked cards, you know, the spells and stuff, and then hand traps. Literally everything else is just hand traps, and then fairy tale snow. Okay. And a gofu. Everything else is hand traps. All right. There's one thing. Uh, He's playing Black Luster Soldier Envoy of the Beginning. Oh, that's pretty good. I, that's, I, I can't believe that he's playing Black Luster Soldier. Black Luster Soldier. How is it, is it for him to summon the card? Uh, well, he's got ICTD Crow from over here, Go yeah, Fu. Crow. There's quite a few dark targets. Okay. All right, guys. Let's, let's see how this is going to play out. Let's take that's you to Alistair. the feature match and get going with round six. All right, here we got... Tiago on the left, Marcel on the right. I have to say, right. I love that name, Tiago. It just sounds like the right level of aggressive. Like, <laughs> you just go, it's like, yeah, I like that guy. Just cool name. Why, why do the players have headphones? I, I actually didn't even notice those before. You've never noticed those before? No, I completely blanked out on that part. It's, it's so that they can talk to each other. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, they're noise cancelling. So the idea is because the feature match area is now open and we can have an audience live spectating, we don't want the uh, players to actually hear somebody getting excited, shouting, or trying to so potentially influence the match. For their own protection. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh, but they've got clear communication between the two of them. Uh, unfortunately, it's not a Babel fish that so doesn't actually translate across the language barrier, nah. but they can hear each other. We, we're going to get there. Someday. Kind of soon. It already exists, that technology. Um, yeah, it's going to be less than 10 years. Yeah. Also, yeah, as pointed out by our tech team, there is also a headset for the judge, so they can talk. We're not on the same comms with them, because we turned out that's actually a very complicated thing to set up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, so we see the hand by uh, Marcel's hand coming in, two copies of Duelist Alliance. Yeah. Tiago's straight out of the blocks with two wins. I don't think that's necessarily correct. Ah, there we go. Fixed. Scapegoat, <laughs> Cosmic Cyclone, Terraforming, Fairy Tale Snow, Ghost Ogre, and Snow Rabbit. So Terraforming, Magical Meltdown, Alistair, and he's in business from turn one. And Scapegoat to follow up into a potential Borlo Dragon or other good stuff. <laughs> oh, wow. That is a really good Pendulum. And hand. Pendulum goes first, which, of course, this deck wants to do. Yeah, and that's a fantastic opening hand. So this is like the opposite of what we saw in the round before, yeah, where, we, where we saw some, some really bricky hands. Yeah, absolutely. He's going to be able to go, and he's going to be able to search so many times. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff happening there. And um, despite the Ghost Ogre, no real disruption on Tiago's side. 
Well, the hand traps are generally pretty weak in the pendulum matchup mm -hmm. uh, because there's a lot of good stop points for them, unlike uh, Spiral, where they just kind of have to pass that turn. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Ghost Ogre, probably the best. He's That's the best actual magician best. to hit <laughs> with Ghost Ogre, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, normal summon the Joker. Oh, that hurts. Like, <laughs> if, if you see all of that coming down on you, it's like, yeah. when it rains, it pours. Oh, it's all right, Tiago's got this. So how much of a difference does it make that the uh, pendulum scales are no longer their own zones, but rather in your spell and trap zone? Um, we haven't really seen any other pendulum decks in the Pendulum Magician since the introduction of the uh, Master Rule 4, um, which was when we introduced the Link Summoning. Mm -hmm. uh, so Pendulum Magician is kind of like the only deck because its spell and trap cards essentially did what would normally be on multiple different cards. Um, losing those additional spaces is an issue. Uh, is definitely an issue if you want to play heavy back row. Right. Um, but we've not. R one of the things we've not really seen a lot of, except for Magical Musketeers, is the zones mattering. And mm. this is going to become more of a more of a thing uh, a little bit uh, in the future when more Spoiler of the Spoiler alert. Yeah, with the with the placement of cards and the pendulum zones being fixed onto those positions. Um, yeah. You know, there could be there could be some more interesting stuff that causes it life to be a bit harder for Pendulum, or maybe even better. Right, we'll have to wait and see. You heard it here first. <laughs> so, is it, is there ever going to be that that old deck that cared about positioning? Is that going to come back? The Senate Switch deck. Uh, we've printed a few cards that are along the same lines, like Fuse Line uh, was one of the more recent ones. Uh, those those are for some interesting cards. There's some stuff in Extreme Force. I'm just trying to remember. I think the community called them Jack Knights. Um, I, I can't remember what the community name for them was. Um, where they actually have I'm not sure. A lot of cool effects where if their um, their spells and traps are essentially if they're if your monsters are in the same zone as where the card was activated, yeah. you negate them. Um, but then there's cards that like move them as well that are quick right, effects. Right, right, yeah. So you can then start just moving your guys around and you can build up a field where your opponent's being forced to play into certain zones, which then falls into Things like uh, fuse line and stuff. No, oh. yeah, it's a cool deck. Whether or not that takes off, uh, that'll be up to you guys to decide as the as the player base. But uh, there's one one advancement on that. I, I think it makes sense because you only have so many resources and limitations in Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, so it makes sense that the the placement matters more. Yeah. All right, but explosive star. You guys said it from the very beginning. Very yeah, very good stuff for the for the pendulum player. Ends on a strong field here. Yeah. Um, it would have been even stronger if it wasn't for that Ghost Ogre. Yeah, actually, it would have been. But see, he's still in a good position. The Tornado Dragon actually uh, blanks the Scapegoat and the Solemn Strike, and or a Solemn Strike at the moment, yeah. uh, depending on how this turn plays out. But there is Terraforming Magical Meltdown also gets blanked, so that's actually pretty hard. Fairytale Snow triggers on Normal Summon, is that right, Luke? I think it's on Summon, yeah. So that would be the... If this card is normal or yeah. special summon. So yeah. that's going to be the normal summon of choice, most likely, because none, <laughs> no <laughs> none of the other cards... no other choice. None of the other cards actually get him anywhere, does it? Because, yeah, if he goes Terraforming Magical Meltdown, Chain uh, Tornado Dragon, clear the Magical Meltdown, yeah. um, then you've got no other monsters except for Fairytale Snow, so it makes sense yeah. to summon the Fairytale Snow, flip down the Tornado Dragon, attack over it, get it off the field, then set Solemn Strike, Scapegoat. Solemn Strike, very strong against Pendulum. Yeah, um, I think he should just play. It. He should norm. Mm, that's awkward. <laughs> yeah, he's got to like normal summon snow. Let them then then play meltdown so that it resolves. I think that's a better line of plays. I think play yeah summon the snow, flip down the tornado dragon, play the meltdown so it resolves at least. Nope, okay, maybe he's, he's, he's going that. the other direction. But oh okay. Uh, Does it, whoa, is there whoa, any whoa, reason whoa, whoa, whoa. to not play snow first? Um, I'm actually more shocked right now why he didn't play Tornado Dragon. Magical Meltdown can't be responded to. Is there some sort of effect we're missing? No. Yeah, it searches for the... Uh, when scratch activate, add one Alistair from your deck to your hand. Definitely can be responded to with this Tornado yeah, Dragon. Okay, yeah. that's maybe a bit greedy trying to hold back the uh, Tornado Dragon. So maybe he tried to bait something here, and the opponent was like, no, you're not playing my games with me. Yeah, I, d I, d I don't know where the bait is here. There's, just <laughs> there's, not <laughs> there's nothing. I, he could have even, like, he could Tornado Dragon the Meltdown and then um, then use the Time Pendulum Graph, because he's got that as well. So it's not So like even if there was a follow-up um, yeah, follow Magical Meltdown, so you go, yeah, here's my second one. You take that yeah. out as well. Yeah. 
Interesting. Okay. I think the absolute correct play was to play Snow first. Yeah. I think but hoping your opponent doesn't actually uh, use the Tornado Dragon is... Um, uh, you can't do that because he's playing Invocation and Magical Meltdown exists. Yeah, it's, that's just exactly what's being said. Actually, I think maybe that you can't negate Fusion's I think you can't spells. respond to them. Yeah, I, I, I'm not 100% sure. Sorry, what? Uh, have you got Magical Meltdown there? Yeah. Certainly, what, he, what when, he's when doing, he can't activated, do. When it's you can add one lace to the Invoker to your hand. The activation of your cards and effects that include an effect, ah. the Fusion Summons, yeah. the Fusion Monster cannot be negated. Also, your opponent's cards and effects cannot activate when a monster is fusion summoned this way. Yeah. So he, c he can respond. Yeah, he can respond. You just can't can negate it. Can't negate it, yeah. yeah so but it that makes still zero difference because Mechaba couldn't. I just. I feel like this has got out of, out of hand already. Marcel had so much control. I, I don't know whether we're missing something here, but he, he just had so much control over this game that he could have used, and then he's just not used it. Like if you use a tornado dragon, you've at least used some of your resources. Whereas now he's just not used it. Ask Marcel if he does win this matchup in the interview why he chose not to use the tornado dragon. Mm. Um, he held that back, and now he potentially loses the tornado dragon for no value. And the time pendulum graph, because he, he, yeah, it's it's a riddle. Yeah, this R just seems riddle really. Me this. It just seems really odd. So that tornado dragon was like. A, a minus now. And that's pretty rare. Yeah. It's a I mean, especially in that matchup when the plays play out the way they did. Was he, like, trying to play around Gamma or something? like? Oh, yeah, he might have been, actually. His opponent goes, activate Magical Meltdown. You assume Gamma because of the large hand trap lineup. So but, like, even if you are trying to play around Gamma, you still play the Tornado Dragon, right? Because um, you just can't play around Gamma. Well, at that point, your opponent gets Alistair, normal summons it, then the Gamma becomes blanked because they can't activate it if they've already got a monster. So he waits for that and then decides to Tornado Dragon something else. But I feel he was out of hand at that point. As soon as Alistair was, was out of the deck, that Stop was out it, Yeah, of stopping your opponent getting the Alistair, I think, is more important than... Well, actually, well, think about it this way. If he gets the Gamma during his own turn, he can Synchro Summon into Cyframe Omega, and then that starts doing some horrible things. So playing around the Gamma... Not necessarily the worst thing, but uh, Marcel's then just now lost control of uh, yeah, completely of the field. I guess it's a case of do I do I lose to Gamma, and Marcel decided yes, so I'll wait. Um, yeah. Not considering that he, he he might be falling behind, but at least he didn't lose instantly. Yeah. So, so sometimes it is better that way. Yeah. Might have been the logic. Of course, we can ask him if he ends up here. Uh, even if Thiago wins, we can ask that question because they're probably going to have a conversation about that game. Yeah, true. Knowing players. Yeah, I, I think I'm kind of starting to come around to the idea that Marcel was just like, I just don't need to. I have, I have a follow-up play next turn. Mm -hmm. I just don't need to do these things. I'm going to let it play out. You know, maybe that was, that was the logic. I mean, as, as long as his uh, pendulum scales are in place, he's in decent shape. Except yeah. there's a solemn strike to consider for the uh, Diego. Yeah. When do you strike? Uh, depends on what the pendulum summon is. Because the magicians will be destroyed and then they get triggered. Ah, oh, Pot of Desires. Yeah, I guess the difference is if he does get hit by Gamma, then he's got to deal with a Cyframe Omega and a, yeah. a Mechaba. Was there a Snow in there in the 10 cards? I'm sure. Um, I think that's like the only card I could spot. Yeah, there, there's a Snow. <laughs> yeah. Four pack Acrobat Joker coming down? Yeah, Skull Crowbat Joker is just so good. I was a little bit nervous when we put this back to uh, unlimited status. Mm -hmm. On the Forbidden Limited, I was like, uh, this could get out of hand a little bit quickly. Yeah, it did. <laughs> <laughs> for, for a little while, then Spir little Spiral showed up and was like, don't worry, guys. Put them back this. in check. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's unfortunate. All of his purple poison magicians were banished within that. Really? Place. Yeah. Oh, wow, man. Just got, on, got that on the, on the red line, as it's now being called. Yeah. I think that's a good name for it. This just in. 
yeah. We still have the, okay, didn't come up with a deck name for that pendulum, uh, not pendulum, that spiral deck that wants to go second. Eugen had some interesting ideas. So we should just write spiral in a fancy way and instead of an R, we want to have a two in the name. For example, I oh. said, oh. Oh. We could I just was like, that doesn't work. Can we just write the R backwards and pretend we're interns? Like, Yeah, maybe, I don't know. I'm still waiting for a cool suggestion, to be honest. Yeah, if you guys got that, by all means, uh, throw, it, throw it up in the chat and we'll uh, see what we come back with. I'm trying to think if there's any witty James Bond movie titles or something. Oh, uh, yeah, I didn't really go there so far. Spy Second? Yeah, I mean, some, it's like you only live twice or something. You only roll the die twice. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I shouldn't do brainstorming loud. That's, that's not how it works. That, yeah, it's like when people say there's no wrong answers and then they mock you profusely for your suggestions. Oh, yeah. like, well, clearly there was a wrong answer or you wouldn't be making fun <laughs> of me. This isn't a safe space. Yeah, I'm just doing this for entertainment purposes, not, not to make a point or anything. <laughs> <laughs> so my job description right now. So Harmonizing Magician going to resolve here. So strong. You just get to go get a thing from your deck for free and now you get to synchro someone with it. Yeah, so maybe this really was what he was thinking. He yeah, said, I, I have a follow-up play. I don't mind if I'm losing... Uh, my dragon. I just don't want you to have the side frame Omega. Yeah. yeah, and if that was the plan, I mean, it's easier to say, of yeah. course, when when we ask him that way. Hey, by the way, you had a follow-up play, and you could do everything in the next turn. Was that what you were thinking in that moment? And the yeah, correct answer is yeah, always, of course. Yeah, of course yeah. What else? Yeah, that was exactly what I planned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's probably gonna do it with a cat on one hand, <laughs> with the other. He's like <laughs> And there we go. That's going to be enough damage to get him there. He is actually like wow. a like an evil super bad guy. So here we go. Muzzle Bruner taking down the first game, very convincing fashion. Very convincing. We doubted him for a second there. We were wrong. He won that pretty convincingly, if you ask me. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was uh, definitely well played there. Um, evaluating the risk and assessing his losses, and deciding these are acceptable. Yeah. And then uh, takes it down. But we, we didn't see anything super special here. No, uh, Tiago's deck just uh, essentially summoned Alistair and uh, made one fusion monster, then lost. That was essentially mm. all, all that happened. Mm. <laughs> it's not what you want to have in your CV. <laughs> so how, how did that job go for you? Yeah, we summoned one monster and lost. Yeah, it was, uh, what's your previous work experience? I summoned a guy and uh, I lost him. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. Sounds like you're uh, suitable for minimal uh, min middle management. I, I would love if all the all the job interviews at Konami are going to go that way. So, what did you summon last weekend? What, what's been your your previous job experience like? Thank experience been like. Okay, what's going to come in from the side decks here? We we still have a bit of an issue with that. Um, from the pendulum side, um, we do have access to evenly matched. Not so effective. Um, Solemn Scolding could be a thing. Uh, Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries, providing there is a no, there are, is no invoked cards in this extra deck to right, pull so out. So the Winter Cherries are so effective. Lava Golem, mm. but it's just Mechaba that you leave on the field, right? Yeah. But you did see Fairy Tale Snow, so there is the potential. Yeah. Uh, Chaos Hunter. Well, Chaos Hunter does stop cards getting banished. So. Yeah. Yeah. I've got some interesting stuff over here. We have um, the evenly matched. There's three of those. Um, especially against pendulums, pretty yep. good. Right. But more importantly, three-dimensional barrier. That's strong. That's against pendulum. Really strong against pendulum. Right. Oh, I got free full force virus, by the way. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. But I think it destroys <laughs> monsters with uh, 1,500 defensiveness. Yeah, I think Which so. Which doesn't get Alistair. No. Which is the key part. It does get all of the hand traps, though. This is true. Hmm. All right. So maybe not that, not that much sideboarding, actually, in this match. Uh, definitely a lot less than we saw before. We, we had some matches earlier where you could really tell that it made all the difference, the, the side deck cards. Um, who's going to go first here? Uh, I mean, Pendulum wants to go first, so Tiago is probably going to um, take a bite out of that poisoned uh, it's apple. Be it's better better for Tiago to go first. Okay. Especially with that Gofu that he's just got. And with dimensional oh, wow. barriers as well. Oh, my 
God, <laughs> that hand is savage. Okay. That hand is absolutely wow. savage. Warning, responses. He's uh, got warning, he's got meltdown, he's got go -fu. So he's got two stars. And a hand trap. Disruption and disruption. Yeah. That is that is uh, that is so brutal. Tiago is ready to start the game. <laughs> uh, Marcel <laughs> has evenly matched, uh, which probably means he's expecting to go second here. Yeah, and he is. Evenly matched completely changes my opinion. Here's your question: If you're <laughs> like, if you're Tiago and you overly and you're going to commit into this field uh, with a Mechaba, I don't actually know if you can get to a Mechaba to be honest. Yeah, to keep keep warning in hand. Yeah, do you keep the warning in hand? But I don't think he can get to a Mechaba. Well, wait, hold on. Yeah, he, if he uses Gofu to make Proxy Dragon, yeah, to make Deco Talker, that's the only way. And then makes Mechaba, and then he yeah. has a Proxy Dragon as his light material. Gofu, extremely powerful card, uh, allowing you to get a number of Link monsters straight off the, uh, straight out of your extra deck without having to use up your normal summon. Mm -hmm. It's one card that um, generally forces a response from your opponent without taking away precious yeah, he's uh, resources from you. Right. He's proxying. Yeah. Yeah, so there's the light monster. And Tedeco Talker. Deco Talker looks so cool as well. I yeah, really like this card. Yeah. It's, to me, this is like the Dark Magician of the Link monsters. Yes. So it's like the go to uh, monster, basically. Yeah, like the, the ace monster is, uh, for a playmaker is like Firewall Dragon, but in speed dueling it's less effective because of the less zones, so he tends to go to Deco Talker more. Yeah. Uh, kind of like the Junk Warrior. Um, well, I remember when I first saw it, they first showed us this, uh, the concept artwork, and I was looking at it, I was like, oh, it looks a little bit like Buster, uh, Buster Blader, and they're like, yeah, good, somebody got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Buster Blader looks awesome. <laughs> it's one of the coolest artworks from classic Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay, strong, strong opening yeah. for Thiago. He's like we said, he couldn't hope matched. for much more, and then evenly match is going to completely turn that upside down, right? Yep. He set the solemn yeah. warning, which he set the could warning. be... It's job done here. Could be a mistake. Yeah. Absolutely, he's got, there's no way you to keep, draw cards you now. You keep the Mechaba, but then you lose the solemn warning, you lose the magical Do you keep down. the Mechaba? Yeah, because it has negation. Uh, like, I keep the warning. You keep the warning? I yeah. Because I don't, I don't want to... Oh, oh, there's Lava Golem as well. God. Pick your poison. <laughs> it's so good. This like this looked like the best possible opening yeah. for Thiago. And suddenly, Marcel, he's, he can even pick no, I think how he's going to tear it apart. Start with evenly matched, and then uh, Lava Golem, whatever, Thiago follow follow, tries to follow up with. Right. And so you would keep... Lava Golem's only good ones. You would keep the, the Mecha Bar. Matt? Yeah, I think having the negation is important. You would I keep, keep warning. warning. But he hasn't got any spells in his hand, so maybe it's less effective. Oh, okay, okay, he decides not to use up the evenly matched, or he just wants to guarantee that the, the evenly matched goes through. Not, yeah. Because he doesn't know his opponent doesn't have any trap cards. Yeah. Well, he sided into a burn deck. No, <laughs> no, 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 I take that back. Don't, don't even take that serious for one second. Lava Golem is super cool, because uh, when you consider the Trigate uh, Firewall Dragon formation uh, from the Spiral deck, if you take out the Trigate Wizard and the Sleeper, the Firewall is no longer uh, mutually linked to anything he's, either. He's so you actually clear all three of the responsive threats. And the only thing you have to worry about is the um, utility wire. So Lava Golem is extremely strong when people decided that maybe Ra Wing Dragon and Ra Sphere Mode a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. but then again, we did see three of them in one match. Uh, just brings all three of them in, draws two of them. Why he's not? not? He's not even going to play evenly matched. No. Yeah, no, he's not. He can hold it back. Uh, he's just not probably going to get a chance to play it at all. This but game. We keep no. hearing that it's only good in the first turn. That's so why. I, that's m my logic behind yep. playing it first turn was that I think that's better. And then have the lava golem as the uh, backup because like the evenly yeah. match is never going to do anything for the rest. No, because you're going to have pendulum scales for the rest of the game. Unless uh, Marcel intends to end it, try and end it on this turn, but he knows his opponent is playing Solemns, so it'd be incredibly risky to try and pendulum summon a large hand into that. That's why I would keep the Solemn, because your opponent then has to play around it, like, quite strictly. To be fair, though, warning on the double iris, that doesn't feel good. Oof. That's not going to feel That's good at all. That's a sinister choice here. Yeah. Normal Summon has not been used for this turn, has it? Exactly. It's going to be Skull Cravat Joker. And that's just yeah. not pleasant. So if you yeah, Solemn so he, Warning he lets here. it go through, doesn't, doesn't warn it, would you agree? 
Ah, so hard, right? That's, that's awesome. really tough. So did Marcel see all of that? Like we, we keep in the first game, we weren't sure if he made the right play, and then it turned out to be the perfect play. And again, we're like, hmm, evenly matched is not so bad, and he's playing it this way, and it seems to be working out pretty well for him. Yeah, uh, absolutely. He this might, be, the, he might just thing. be one step ahead of us the whole time. Yeah, well, this is the thing. There's, um, there's different ways that you can play it with different mindsets as well. If, you, if you're in the mindset that you want to play a certain way, then you will. Like, Matt will not pilot a deck the same way that I will. Yeah. Because, you know, because I'm, a, I'm a complete a scumbag, and, yeah. and I would play some kind of weird <laughs> FTK deck versus playing something that requires skill. Whereas yeah, Luke is like, hey, Matt, do you want to have a fun duel? Sure, let's go on. And then he'll solitaire for five minutes, like for 15 minutes. You're like, yeah, great game. <coughs> great yeah. game. <laughs> yeah. But I proved the point that that, that new card that, we, uh, that we're going to make shouldn't be made. <laughs> <laughs> That's always, always a point to be made. <laughs> Interesting with the Lava Golem is that is a fire monster for Perka Trio which can run yeah. over very large fields and steal games. Yeah, and we didn't see that Thiago was playing uh, scapegoat, wasn't he? He was, he was. And we're going to see Invocation. That's interesting, because for a second it looked like Marcel had this, almost had this. Yeah, and the Ash Blossom shut it down. Yep. No, wasn't it the warning? Well, Ash, Ash, I think Ash Blossom was, yeah. the, and was yeah. the key Ash to it. Ash first and then, and then warning the XC monster. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one-two punch. Yeah. Let's agree on that. Yeah, I think it was, it was both. So is Lava Golem going to decide this match? Uh, well, it now attacks for 3,000 damage. Yeah. Like, that's no, not... And there's one scale stuck in play, so the evenly match way less effective. Yeah. Yeah, I, I absolutely think that the it should play have evenly, evenly matched... matched instead of playing Lava Golem. <laughs> Obviously, the, that, it sounds it's worse much, when you hear it. It's easier to say afterwards, of but course. But we said that before, Yeah, right? we did, we did, yes. So, but, you know, anyway. Yes. I'm um, just trying to play Devil's Advocate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's my job here. Yeah, but I, I still think this is this is a lot of damage here for Thiago. <laughs> you think, yeah? Yeah. Oh, 5,500, it's, it's only j just over half. Just, yeah. yeah, it's just a lot. But still, we've got a Skullcrabat Joker in hand. Which gets uh, negated by the Mechaba. And then there's just the Earth Dragon can get back a scale. There's nothing else in the extra deck. Harmonizing Magician, now that's interesting. Oh, the, okay, yeah, there's stuff to be done. I mean, he only has to deal 4,000 damage because Lava Golem is going to trigger. Yeah, he has to deal 4,000 damage yeah. while leaving the. Yeah, uh, he can't do that. So, Lava Golem so easy. Like, I don't, what, 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 why is he doing that? Okay, uh, I think he's kind of overanalyzed this and tried to think to himself, okay, I can bait out the Mechaba. And now he's like, okay, I've just bricked my scales. <laughs> Whoops. And Tiago seemed to be more step ahead of him right there. But now you have no target for Oath Dragon. Okay, so now that is going to get negated by Mechaba. Yep. Wait, he's nodded. Why did he nod? Yeah, he, he kind of, kind of did like. Oh, no uh, effect. Point to the card. Oh no, no effect. Ah, okay. oh, Baguska. Oh, that slows things down a little bit. Yeah. So now he's gonna shift it into a burn deck. <laughs> no, <laughs> it takes five damage. Does he? Doesn't it affect it? Oh, it affects it negated. Like yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, of course. Sorry, I'm getting too excited to see Lava Girl. Yeah, again. okay. It's been too long. Take all of that back. Yeah. I'm like one of those people that's just like, uh, it's, as soon as a tiny bit of bird damage, did you write that down? Did you write that down? Mm. Oh, there's a scapegoat. That's okay, effective uh, when you've already got a Mechabo in that extra deck, so. Yeah. Oh, Baguska is feeling terribly tired. I can just relate. Like, just like us. He, he's one of those guys that said, why did we have four players too many during registration? Yeah, definitely. He's definitely in that camp right now. Yep. He's protesting against the extra round. Why? Hey, hey, the extra round just means we get more quality content for our wonderful viewers at home who are not abusing us on Twitch chat. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if There's only about four of them, Matt. If you weren't British, I could have taken that seriously. But <laughs> I, I think there was a spice of British humor 
in there somewhere, <laughs> <laughs> hidden in the middle of that statement. I really want to see a burn deck, to be honest. Uh, like like this turning into a burn match. Just don't get me wrong. I don't want to see a true burn deck, but this. I mean, we can call Ryan Yu, see if we get him over from Canada, and be like, hey, you just won Worlds, you want to come play Chain Burn? And he'd be like, no, not, not today, I'm busy. Um, but yeah, we can always get a burn deck on. I'm busy gathering the souls of the people I've crushed. <laughs> what do you need all those tears for? Don't worry about it. Just don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Just ask Ben Lovell. <laughs> he knows something, one thing or two about that whole topic of salty tears. <laughs> Especially in Prague, I think. I think that was, oh no, that was in Rimini. It's, it's becoming incre incredibly f confusing to tell the events apart because we keep coming back to the same places. There, it, it was a yeah. lot easier when, yeah, that happened in Madrid because we've only been there once. And um, I was like, that, did that happen in, in Rimini the third time we were there or in Prague the third time we were there? Yeah, oh, it's, it, my, the events have kind of molded into one yeah. for yeah. me now. Uh, I'm still surprised that I could actually tell who won the first YCS Prague. What were these players' uh, last season's uh, performance there, Luke? Uh, what do we know about these Good guys? Good question, Matt. It's almost like I have a program here that I wrote to check that. Oh, that's how lucky are we? That's when I can type. <laughs> yeah, you too, you were writing the dialogue for some of my favorite soap operas, I can tell. Okay, Tiago attended four tournaments. And he won all of them because his name's Tiago. Uh, um, unfortunately not. He has a 40% win ratio. Okay. He's doing well here, though, at yeah. this event. Yeah. yeah. This might be his breakout performance. Uh, Mr. Brunner. Uh, I got nothing. No hits? Nope. No hits. No active and career th last th year. There's just so many Mars. Like, I've checked, I've checked Brunner, and then now I'm checking Marcel, but there's just so many Marcels that it's really impossible. Uh, we have the uh, Konami numbers we could check with, right? Yes. Yes, I could try that. Somewhere here. Yeah. In the meantime, not much has happened here. Uh, the Deco Talker showing up and getting fully powered up. Uh, that's definitely a thing. And the terribly tired tape here is gone. So uh, Marcel's now able to push out. Uh, nope, so we don't have any data for Marcel Bruno. Okay. Didn't so play last season. Maybe he's one of those players that just came back for this tournament. Possibly. I mean, he, he is from Germany, it's kind of close. I've seen a player here uh, earlier when I took a break who I haven't seen in 12 years. Really? I'm, and I'm not, not uh, like exaggerating or anything. 12 years. I'm kind of surprised that I immediately could tell that it was him, but um, still. Prague is one of those places that keeps uh, bringing people back to the game. Big Mister. Oh, my old friend. That yep. was such a good format. Very prominent person. What color would you say that Marcel's sleeves are? Me. Either of you. Kind of like cardboard color. This, like uh, a like brown or gray? The weird thing is we have two different screens and the lighting is different, so they, yeah. they look very different on those two. Kind um, of beige. Yeah, beige is a good description. Kind of say. like the color that your doctor's surgery kind of looks when it's just <laughs> painted, very basic. <laughs> so That's okay. actually a really good way of putting it. <laughs> you're sat in the waiting room just awkwardly waiting to be seen while one person coughs and no one looks at each other. <laughs> okay, so Marcel managed to take out all the threats all the big monsters uh, that Tiago had summoned earlier, or the heat that were summoned to his side of the field. And I gotta give him credit, he's, uh, he's very relaxed in this whole thing. Yeah. Seems to be in control the entire time so far. And uh, Tiago is now in a, in a tight spot, actually. He has to come up with something to turn this around. Oh, scapegoat. That's a very good starting point to turn this around. Is that at the end of his opponent's turn? Or is he already in his turn? It's got to be during his opponent's turn because he played Ghost Ogre. He like, chained Ghost Ogre to it, didn't he? Yeah, I think he's chaining it to the Ignister. Yeah. So that the uh, scapegoat doesn't get shuffled away. Uh, 
Oh, wait, no, it wasn't Skaven. Well, good, no, that's, that's right. He, he can go stoke uh, Ignis Debate's effects of resolves. Yeah. And you, you pick on resolution what you're going to spin away with Ignista, so... No, it's not a targeting effect. No. Uh, okay, so yeah, he used escape because he thought his opponent was just going to clear it out. Yeah. That's why, because Ignista always worked on Dark Destroyer. That's how I remember. Ah, Dark Destroyer. <laughs> We've missed that card. I miss Cosmo. Where are all the Cosmo players? Luke? Yeah, where are they at? They're in Cosmo Town <laughs> having a good time. Not playing giant, untargetable monsters. Oh no, they all are. They all are together, enjoying themselves. Yeah, in Cos with, with, Cosmo with Heaven. With Slippy and Tin Can. Oh, those were the days. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure everybody would agree. Everybody's got a different memory with these things. Yeah. Like Matt hates goat format. I, I can. I'm not a fan of the scapegoat format that everybody Obsesses talks so over. fondly about. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with it for one match. Actually, most of the time it's one game. And after that, I'm like cured from that disease. And I'm like, okay, let's not play that again for three months. It's actually super interesting that that's, uh, that's one of the formats that a lot of the players go back to and say, this is like our all-time favorite yeah. format. I would say that it's the most different from the current format, and that's, that's the main reason. Because it's so slow, <laughs> so people are like, "Okay, I wanna, I wanna have something for a change," and that is, that is it, obviously. Yeah. A and of course, it's very skill, skill based. Like you have to know when you're using your five removals in your deck, and you cannot just like use them on the first thing because you're gonna win next turn. Because Honestly, I think if you went back and revisited a lot of formats and played them as much as the community has now played the Go Control format, you'd find a lot of these niche interactions or things that you could do that just weren't uh, ever a part of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because people didn't figure it out. People didn't figure out the formats people, completely. People, like the original Go Control format at the time, what the community's understanding of the game was, and I was playing in this format as a spotty teenager mm -hmm. with my Beast Stein deck going, oh yeah, my Enraged Battlelocks just tramples over the uh, scapegoat there, and that's pretty good winning games. But it was a case of like, I gotta slow the game down. I haven't drawn my power card yet. Hold on, hold on. I'm like loading a musket. And wait, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Alright, now I've got everything. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go off. And that's that's kind of how the deck was played back then. Obviously players have now had a lot more future knowledge um, of how deck construction can do. The resources are out there. You guys are doing a lot of articles and videos on various social media channels. And the the standard of player is significantly better now than it was in the game mm -hmm. back then. Uh, that the Go Control format has evolved. Uh, but I think that could still happen in many old formats if other people wanted to explore them, like I Dragon Rule. I remember when the German national champion, David Kretschmer, went to the World Championship with a super explosive limiter overload machine deck. And everybody thought that's a terrible choice because it was advantage-based all the time. And he didn't care about advantage. He just uh, won. Either I win or I don't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He just won the tempo war, so to speak. And he ended up on third place at the World Championship, so it seemed like a pretty neat strategy for that one tournament. And I think he only lost one match all weekend. I qualified for a Ferris Tour playing a uh, machine uh, OTK deck, mm. and it was just playing things like, uh, even went as far as playing things like Power Bond, because you find your opponent's yes. uh, Power Bond. You'd just be like, oh, actually, I can just make a Chimera Tech uh, Dragon with like a bajillion attack. Cyber but Twin, we've come yeah. with uh, Overload. Yeah, that's but pretty good. Talk oh, Bond, about, sorry. Talking about simpler times, talk about simplification. All of a sudden, all the cards on the field are gone. It's only Tiago with one monster left, and uh, Marcel doesn't really have anything to fight back right now. He's trying to come back now on his turn. Yeah, Magalancia is the only thing that's kind of standing in the way for Tiago. It's a pretty good thing to stand in the way. <laughs> it's got a lot of attack points. Right. So, Marcel with just 1,800 left. So, is the Harmonizing Magician going to do something here? Do you, do you think the Harmonizing uh, Magician is, is the card that's going to make the difference here? Yeah, I think so. He, I mean, if he's able to pendulum summon that and uh, get another monster, he can do a big synchro summon, which would be pretty good. Because um, then he can get over that. The I, I have to read its name like four times to say its name. Uh, Magellancia. 
Magalancia. Magalancia. Yeah, you it's, it, yeah, you, of course you sound, make it sound so easy when I just said it. Yeah, of course. It's uh, you just speed up with the with the talking and it's easier. Yeah. I, well, yeah. If I just kind of mumble, then it might sound like it. Yeah, yeah, you just need to do it with conviction, and then everything is Magalancia. fine. So how, it's how you pronounce it. Uh, Indian names. Yeah. Uh, Palasubramaniam, for example. If you if you read that, it's Palasubramaniam. Yeah. You just go quickly. It's super easy, and nobody will even uh, notice if you missed one part. Yeah. It's the same with German last names, by the way. Yeah. yeah. But yours is pretty easy. Yeah, pretty straightforward. All right. So, I cannot tell who's gonna win this duel. No, it's gonna be very close. I mean, uh, Marcel's gonna be able to do some decent plays here. Hopefully, get his time pendulum graph settled. But still, Magellancia is pretty big. He's got to deal with that. Oh, it wasn't Harmon. Oh, no, he does have Harmon. Okay, I've missed that. Because it's always just so difficult with the monsters being in different zones, like mm -hmm. really far away from each other now. So, yeah, he's going to be able to Synchro Summon. What's, uh, what, I've got his deck list here. Let's have a look what options he actually has for, for Synchro Summons here. Uh, oh, no, I'm looking at the Invoked. I need that one. Yeah, I'm just... Wait a second. Um, so... He's got some Omegas. Uh, he already used Ignista this game, didn't he? So that would be the perfect one. Yeah, Ignista's gone. Uh, he's got Time Star he could use um, if he's able to get Time Pendulum Graph as well. That's basically it. it. You know, there's no huge Synchro Monsters that he can use here. Well, I think he's... No, he's not. He's popping his scales. Yeah, so he's using Black Fang's effect. Ah, of course, he can just use Black Fang's effect. Can we bring up Black Fang Edition? Yeah, here we go. That, I, I always get mixed up between Black Fang and Double Irises. Nah, that's the one. Yeah, Black Fang, if you uh, target a face up monster your opponent controls, you can make it half its attack just for this turn and then destroy and then Black destroy Fang. Then destroy it, yeah. yeah. So and it popped itself, basically. Yeah, and perfect is Black Fang is able to get Star Time Edition back. And Star Time Edition is kind of a it's key almost card like a in combo. the strategy. Yeah, it <laughs> is almost like a combo. <laughs> I just forgot that he'd already played Star Time. Yeah, well, pretty flexible. I mean, he, he found a way out. Um, <laughs> didn't even make it. It didn't even look like he was breaking a sweat or anything. Yeah. And um, all of a sudden, that threatening Magalancia. Yeah. <laughs> nailed it. It's, uh, it's actually Magalanica. 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 Puts Diego down to 100 life points, I believe. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's suddenly coming out on top here. But he did lose his scales, I yeah. mean, one of them. So That's maybe okay. if Tiago is now able to again turn this around. Yeah, I think this is kind of all in at this point for Marcel. How but many cards does he have in his graveyard? I can want to... Six, seven, eight. The graveyards aren't necessarily 100%. Yeah, but roughly 13, and he's got Fairy Tale Ash Snow. Blossom, so but he's just used his normal yeah. summon, and it got Ash Blossomed on Alistair. So he gets no search, and he can't use the snow from his... Did you say he had one in his graveyard? He had enough in his graveyard, like ah. four 13, 14 cards, something like that. You can summon snow from hand, can't you? Or is it just graveyard? It's uh, minus seven cards in your hand field and or graveyard special summon this card if it's in your graveyard. Yeah, and there's a handshake. Yeah, ah, okay. so much for that, yeah. <laughs> so uh, Tiago couldn't do anything anymore. And again, like Marcel really played this quite well, I have to say. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I think he played that match extremely well. Uh, game one, holding back on the Tornado Dragon, not playing into a Gamma and risking a Sly Frame Omega because he realizes I can make these losses, it doesn't matter. Uh, loses his uh, trap card as well, his uh, Star Graph. Uh, no, it's, it's Time Graph, isn't it? The uh Let me cut you off there. Yeah, well, you're we'll going to get a minute to think about that because we're going to talk about that in our post-match analysis. All right, guys, here we are after round six, which looked like a back and forth between those players. We, we were speculating that it's going to go to a third game, in fact. Yeah, we thought it was. Um, and then it didn't, no. <laughs> no, <laughs> obviously. That, that second game was really backwards and forwards yeah. between two players. The, the first game. Now, now let's talk about that first game again. Uh, Marcel was kicking things off, had yeah. a pretty good start, and um, it did have the... Uh, what's the name? The dragon that allows tornado, you, dragon. tornado dragon that allows you to destroy one spell or trap, yeah. and he doesn't use it. And at first, at first that seemed like a gigantic misplay. Yeah. It seemed like maybe trying to get greedy, and then um, thinking about in, it some more, you factor in the gamma, mm -hmm. and then it make it does make a lot of sense. Right. Yeah. I feel like he he kind of 
he was a little bit kind of on his high horse, like, oh, well, I just have so much stuff, it doesn't matter what happens. What is Which is, it was true, though. He, you know, yeah. he was well in his right He was to like, even if you do this, even if the worst case happens, yeah. um, I can uh, survive long enough, and yeah. then next turn I'm going to turn yeah. this As around. long as I don't get gammoned. Yeah. Then yeah, I should I, be I fine. I don't want you to have the gamma and actually be able to yeah. do something with it this yeah. time. Yeah. So we, we have to find a clever way to ask that question of him to not give away that um, that he's not I don't using know. the turn of the dragon. What we do is you just say, oh, I really Why love the way you played around gamma. And he'd be like, yeah, yeah, I thought so too. And no, then, you know, I'm just, it. we're just going to ask him. So when he played uh, the field spell, why didn't you use tornado dragon? And then yeah. see what happens. Yeah. And see what happens. If he says I forgot about it, then all of a sudden all the credit is out the window. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested to see what he says about. Yeah. It. Then the second game, uh, it seemed like the best possible opening hand for Thiago, uh, if you remember. He, yeah. He did have uh, hand traps to disturb his opponent, yeah. and he did have set up for his own combos basically. So so it yeah. seemed like he could go anywhere he wanted Warning to. Warning and. Um, yeah. Marcel hasn't evenly matched, so we're like, okay, all of that again out the window. Like, he chooses it, it not to play evenly match in the end. Exactly. Uh, so it goes with the lava golem plan, which yeah. seemed a little bit dangerous, but it, it pay, paid off. But the evenly match yeah. then spent the rest of the game in his hand. So, was it the correct decision to not play it? It's yeah. I, what I, I I don't think he was ever getting another opportunity in that game. Yeah. To no, play. I, I kind of feel like that was the wrong play, but, but just this matchup was kind of heavily favored. Okay, for so. Let's think of it. Let's try and understand it from the player. If I play evenly matched, my opponent keeps Mecha Bot, I now cannot Lava Girl and we get the Mecha Bot off the field. So he still has a negation on. Yeah. That's like the l arguments I would make, but knowing that you don't usually evenly matched here, you're not going to use it for the rest of the game. Yeah. Th th there wasn't more to that. You c so he could have um, played the Lava Golem, evenly matched, then continued his plays. I think that was a third option. Yeah. Yeah, um, that, that was another possible. Which, yeah. So he definitely doesn't keep Mechaba. I'm able to clear out his magical meltdown. Not, not too yeah, big. Yeah, so the question is, do I keep Lava Golem or Warning? Yeah, exactly. Which, you know, you're probably going to keep the Warning at that point. It's kind of a, a yeah. given. But, but like, still, it, you know, I think there was three different options, and he chose the one that I would have gone with last. But that's just me. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, obviously, he just won, so, so that's gonna it's be hard to say that, but, yeah. you know. But then again, like Marcel slowly but slowly gained control, and we could yeah. see that Pendulum is still a thing. Yeah, like, it, like just summoning one I monster at a yeah. time. I said this earlier. Resilience. Yeah, this deck has resilience. That's, That's true. The best way to, to it's describe it. It's a long it. game. It's uh, it's in a very good place to take it. It drags you. Yeah. It drags you a long mile. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't. It doesn't win the game immediately, but it doesn't lose the game either. And yeah, then exactly. sometimes that is enough. You just like burn through the resources of your opponent. Yeah. And at the very end, we could see that Thiago. He did have like two more turns, but yeah. there was nothing he could do to really turn this no. around. Yeah, and no. the, the terribly tired Tapir buying up turns as well. That um, was pretty cool. As well, to just to give um, Marcel, some extra Marcel time. just a little bit of extra time yeah. To, yeah. to draw the cards he needed. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I think that is pretty much it. Uh, what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to bring in the player for our post match interview. And after that, we're going to have even more for you because we're going to take another look at the stats. Or shall we do that now? We should um, do that now. We should do that now. Yeah, okay. Let's see how people are getting on. Lu Luke is the expert in this whole thing. Let's 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 take a look at that now. Let's um we let's go back to the breakdown at the start of round one because we showed you this earlier. Um, this is the initial metagame breakdown for YCS Prague number two in 2017. As we said, Spiral most popular deck, one fourth of the entire tournament, 25 yeah. percent is playing that deck. And then we see Trickster, Pendulum, Invoke, True Draco, and then other good decks, Burning Abyss, ABC, and so on. We haven't seen ABC yet in the feature match. Fast forward to round six, and that is, of course, prior to... After round six? I think that's at the beginning of round six, because we don't know... Yeah, the it's the beginning of round we six. We don't know... Okay, so, so ignore the headline at the top. It's not deck breakdown after round six. It's uh, at the start of round six. Uh, of course, Spiral is still the most popular deck, but by now, Spiral has beat the other category. So Where is yeah. ABC gone? It's gone. ABC completely disappeared here. Um, if we look at Trickster, Got busted. Trickster and Pendulum, um, they are still in the same place. Trickster was second. Pendulum was third. Invoked was a same bit. Same place? No, it was the, sa it's the, it's same, the same place. Same but place. It, it was um, ahead of True Draco, Burning Abyss. So all of that pretty much stayed the same. So in terms of relative numbers, we saw ABC disappear. Inferno move up into those uh, top number of decks, and Tricks. Other was completely crushed almost. Well, not completely crushed, but um, Other lost a lot. Yeah, we lost a lot of Spiral decks. in like, If you look at it in comparison to Trickstar and Pendulum, we lost like 50 
over 50 spiral decks, and Trickstar and Pendulum are both like 30, 30, 30 to 40, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, relative I guess it's kind it, of expected. In relative numbers, it's roughly the same loss. Yeah. All right. The other statistics of the day, of course, the country breakdown. This is what we were seeing earlier. Lots and lots of Germans because they share a border with the Czech Republic. And 108 Italians, we said that's pretty surprising considering that for them it's a wider track. And now let's look at the country breakdown initially <laughs> in round six. I mean, it kind of looks the same, but you have to keep in mind we had um, in round one 108 Italians and 88 of those are still in the tournament. So yeah. only 20 players dropped compared to... Uh, over 200, almost 200 German players dropping. Yeah. So the Italians, of course, that's the creme de la creme from Italy. So so all of those guys know how to play. It's not surprising that they don't drop. Um, U UK players, pretty decent conversion rate yes. for the UK. Yeah, re representing quite well this weekend. Yeah. Um, Austria going down from 54 to 37. France from 38 to 26. So in terms of relative numbers, it's roughly the same across the board, except for Greece. They only lost two players. And uh, Switzerland only lost uh, that seven players. So not bad for those countries. I, I think Greece is the most uh, remarkable thing that they only lost two players over the course of five rounds. Awesome. So that's it Home with that attack with us. Um, let's take a quick break and then bring in the player for our post-game interview. <laughs> 